like I said, it was seconds. Hi, it's Beck here from Hello, my name is Beck, and I am doing pot luck prompts today with you. Um, I am going to be picking the prompts now and then coming back in later with um, the actual uh, making video, uh, but it will be all one video for you, so you'll be watching that right this second. Uh, so we have all four of our trays. I've just swiped the bottom of each tray just to make sure I'm not picking up uh, random um, prompts from each box this time. Things are starting to dwindle with the colours, but I have obviously lots more things. So we're going to have to start um, popping some more things into our baskets or bringing some back. Um, so let's grab that one there. That one there, that one there, and that one there. Put the trays back in. So yes, I did a video just before this one. So we've got number two. We have sunset colours. We have weather, that's interesting. And we have stamping. Let's have a look at number two. Um, but yeah, I just did a video a minute ago and it was um, a haul stroke um, or mail opening. So number two is this one here. So it's a stamp, staggered diagonal fold happy mail. So it's this one, really, really cute. I remember Ros, um, I always want to call her Rosie Roo because of the fact that um, Emma Lou Loves calls her Rosie Roo. Uh, so Ros from Paper Crafting with Ros made this one. Um, so this is a really cute and easy one to make. Um, so that's number two there. And then we have sunset colours. We have a weather theme. And then we have stamping. That's going to be very, very interesting, guys. So um, I have some stamps with umbrellas and things, and um, I might be able to do something with that. Whether I'm going to see whether I've got some papers that um, might have some clouds or um, some rain or sunshine on. Then we have sunset colours. Um, there can be multitudes of colours on sunset, but I do love a pink stroke, um, sort of all the, the pinky blues um, and violets uh, when it's a sunset, you know, like, they, what do they call it? Um, pink sky at night, or red sky at night, uh, shepherd's delight, you know, that, that sky. So we will see what we make with these. So the time is... Let's have a look at the time. Um, it's coming up to eight o'clock. I might just make a start now because I am going for a walk at nine with my friend Joe. So let's see whether I can make something within an hour. Um, obviously, I want to get ready for my walk with Joe. So let's see whether we can make something. Okay, so I am back with this beautiful sheet of paper. This is from Echo Park. This is actually a sheet that was gifted to me from Mary. She actually sent, uh, gave me a whole pack from Echo Park and this is called New Day, this range here, and this one's Perfect Day Plaid. Um, so I really, really like the clouds on this. This is going to be uh, very much my... Um, weather then i think that these do actually represent sunset colors a lot of these uh pinks and um purples are in our sunset so hoping that that meets the criteria of my sunset colors and if not i will actually when i do some stamping i will um, include some sunset colors on that one so we're going to make the um staggered diagonal fold happy mail uh, which I have in my little book here. So I, I want the clouds to be the main part 
of this um, Happy Mail um, the main um, what's the word my brain is not working the main come on brain you can do this <laughs> the primary uh, pattern but because it is going to be a diagonal mail it means that the clouds are going to be one way or the other um, which is absolutely fine so we want trying to work this out so we want this edge to be our um, yes we do we do want that edge to be our um, um, what's the word what's the word the actual um, diagonal fold here so I'm just going to so primary so primary pattern will be the clouds and then the plaid is going to be our secondary paper so then what we're going to do is we're going to oh, my cat has found the box from the previous video which was Celine's mail um, where is my ruler that's going to be interesting no ruler why has my ruler gone missing would help if I had a tidy craft room, wouldn't it? Um, do, 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 do. Okay, I can spot it. I spot it. Excuse the squeaky chair. Right, so we have to have four inches. Um, so I'm just going to grab a pencil. So my um, instructions in my book tell me to go for, from this corner here which is right uh, on the primary paper um, so we're not going from the very corner where we have the plaid so we're going from that corner and we're going to be marking four inches here and then coming across from the other side we're going to then mark four inches from that corner in just there one, two, three, four. Yep. Alright, so I have done pencil marks. I'm going to bring in my scoreboard. So I do have the little um prompts just there. I'm going to grab this one. So we're going to pop the pencil mark onto the scoreboard. Do a few on that one and then I'm just going to pop that one there just so that I'm not pushing the paper all the way through. Okay, so we have scored at four and four. Let's see whether my um, whether my measurements are correct on the um, on my book, my Happy Mail Inspiration book. Because I have a feeling we might not be correct. Actually, don't put that away. I was just about to put that one away. So let's bring this in. Am I going the right way? No, I'm not. I am not going the right way. This is turning it over and coming in this side. Oh, it makes the clouds upside down. Oops. Never mind. Should have probably thought that through, shouldn't I? Okay. 
Okay, so this is quite a thick paper, which probably doesn't help this happy mail. My clouds are upside down, but I didn't think it through. So, the actual, um, does actually look okay, however, my picture looks like it's a lot thinner, it looks like it overlaps quite a bit, but we're actually going to go with what I've done because I've already scored. So if you do want to actually have your mail that looks more like this picture, hang on, let's bring that in. I would probably go for five inches um, rather than four. So I've got four inches here of scoring. Um, but yeah, if you do want to bring your mail in, I would add another inch to the score just there. And then it would really, really overlap just here. Um, but mine looks more like um, just a simple envelope here. So it does have the pocket still in the other pockets. Um, but yeah, what we might do is do the stamping and imagery up here so that... Um, so it works out well and then you turn it over and then you have this side here which um, you can actually bring this down and create a pocket across here or just tuck in your letter here um, up to you completely what you do on the back side so let's use some double sided tape to um, get this to um, go together and um, then what we will do is do the stamping um, and yeah, let's see whether I can um, get this video done before I go for my walk. Because yeah, that didn't take long to, um, to create, which is good. Just going to um, use double sided tape all the way along here because otherwise the base pocket will completely disappear. Uh, or not disappear, but have um, the ability for things to slide through. Mm -hmm. Right, come on, there we go. So I think I want that one to go over that side. So we're going to start by sticking this side down. And I'm lining up that bottom edge because I can score along the other edge a lot better lining up that bottom edge and then slipping that one in there so once again scoring up from that base so we have that stuck down I'm just going to pop a little bit of tape just behind that little edge there to stick those two together so that's the amount of tape that I've just grabbed just gonna slide it in here and take the take the tape off Ta -da. stick that in All right perfect 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 now, it's a shame that my clouds are upside down, but I don't think you'll notice once I get my stamped images um, done here. Um, I'm either... So I have two options. I have one beautiful girl that's walking and she has a giant umbrella. Or I have a cartoon girl with an umbrella and like a little dark... But I think I'm going to go with the beautiful girl because, um, yeah, this, this male, um, the colours, I can, I can do some really good colours with that girl. So let's pop that to one side and let's get out that stamp. Um, and we might need our stamping platform. I'm just trying to think as well if I want to use some, maybe some watercolours with her. Um, or do you know what I might do is I'm going to use my Tombows yep I'm going to use my Tombows right so let's find that stamp 
Okay, so I found the stamp set that I was after. I need to get some card to stamp on. So just grab my scraps here. Yeah, that will do. Okay, so let's pop. Draw a little line there where the card needs to go into. Just that can go into the scraps again. Pop that one there. Alright, let's get this girl out. Now, I don't know whether it was in my mind or whether I did say about Tombows. Because I was thinking if I do this in a watercolour ink. Now she might have some ink still on her from the previous stamp. Let's place her where we need her. Oh, doesn't matter, I'm going to cut her out. She doesn't have to be straight. Yeah, she does have some ink on her from previous. But let's use the watercolour Versafine Black. Now, so I was thinking of using Tombos, but I'm thinking we might emboss the black because I have some clear ink, clear, uh, not ink, embossing powder. Let's see how she stamps. Now, get the jumper. Love that the jumper matches the mail because we have clouds. This is my pyjama jumper because on a Saturday morning when I'm doing pop-up prompts I'm in my pyjamas. Look at that beautiful image. Love that. Uh, so yes, I will stamp one more time and I think I will get um, some of my embossing ink. Let's okay, so we've got clear. Uh, we need a piece of paper. Let's, I have a, a blank um, letter um, page here, so I'll just use that. And then it will still be able to be used. Now, so we want to probably stamp. Oh, I haven't done any anti-static. Oh, well. Too late. Too late. Let's ink her up one more time and get ready with this one because it's not it's not like the watermark ink where it's sticky um, the, the Versafine will probably dry quite quickly compared to the proper embossing ink so let's get the jumper again go over it and then quickly on with the embossing powder Embossing powder. So hopefully, because I haven't done the anti, it's anti-static powder. Hopefully, I haven't got too much to brush away. Let's pull up my magnet. Just going to give it a little shakeroo, just so that it does cover the ink. Let's just Okay. We have good coverage. We do need to get rid of some of the powder down here. All right. Piece of paper, good. Powder, good. And uh, now I do have a paintbrush here from one of the previous potlight prompts. Now because it's clear powder, it's not too too difficult if I was to actually uh, do the heat tool on it. 
because it's clear it's not going to matter too much. Okay, and, and don't worry about the way that she is angle-wise because we're going to fussy cut her. Um, let's move that off to one side and clean that up later like the rest of my craft room. Alright, let's... We need to plug in on the heat tool. I will be right back. Okay, so I have plugged in the heat tool. I'm just going to warm it up. Now, so, because I have now embossed it, I will use my Copics. Just because I know that they blend well. Let's grab blue, purple, pink, um, turquoise. Do you think those are sunset colours? Now are you... I think you might be a different blue or the same blue. You're the same blue. Alright, so we probably want to go with blue and purple for the umbrella. Then I think her dress can be those colours. What do you think? Let's go. Let's do this. This is a darker blue than I thought it was, but should still give me, and I'm not too worried about the lines. A nice blend. Alright, so let's go on to the next. Like I said, I'm not worried about the lines because it means that I can now I do need to remember that I'm going for a walk. Okay. I have time. Now, so the lines that I have gone over, I should be able to blend with the purple. Let's see. Okay, so the purple's a lot brighter as well than I thought it would be. One of the things I love about Copics is how evenly they spread. Okay. 
I actually do like the overlay between the two colours, so I might actually add a bit more blue to the purple. Okay, so let's grab that blue and see if we can replicate that edge. Love that. Do the same on this one. And then the same on this one. Gorgeous. I'm not even just come in here and do the same here. Let's pop that in the center and then that in the center. Alright, that's our umbrella. Hmm. Not really working with the colours too much, am I? But we'll see what happens. Alright, so we want probably to start with the pale pink. Actually, should that be her legs? not too fluorescent. Now just to let you know if you are planning on using Copics over embossed uh, lines, I just want to let you know that the Copics themselves will actually dye the lines, the, the, the embossing that you've done, the, it will actually go over the um, embossing and change the colour. But because I've used black, it's not going to do too badly. Um, but if you, if you have done any clear embossing or white embossing powder it will unfortunately dye the lines but like I said because I've used black it's really not doing much okay you can tell the concentration because I'm going all um, Almost Attenborough on you, where I'm whispering, whispering. Ooh, bright, way too bright. That's definitely not that colour, is it? <laughs> oh well, let's see if I go over it with some pink. Not too bad. Alright, there we go. That is our beautiful girl. Let's see whether we can put some colour in those raindrops. 
blue I'm just looking and seeing whether I've got a different blue I have a different blue which is bright like it's a cobalt so we're not going to go that one Now I don't know why I'm doing the, the big, big ones, but um, when I say I don't know why I'm doing the big, big ones, are the ones outside of the lines, like well and truly outside of the lines. Pop those back in the pot. Right, let's cut her out. So I will leave in the ones that are close but the ones that are outside well then truly then i will not leave those in so yes i will cut her out um oh okay i've just had a message from my friend joe so she's saying uh, any chance we can walk later let's say yes sure what time All right, perfect. That means that I don't need to rush. I don't need to rush. Look at that. Look at that working out for now. So this is, <laughs> that's my stamping. This is my project, but it's not looking too cohesive, is it? Not looking too cohesive. Oops. I'm going to see no, I can't because I've used double-sided tape. I was just about to see if I could change the mail. Oh, I'm bummed that that's upside down. I'm bummed that I'm not cohesive with colour. Oh. Mm. <laughs> what to do, what to do. Let's cut her out and see what happens okay we want to get our really nice scissors You really don't want to watch me fussy cutting her out in absolute silence, do you? So let's talk. I was just thinking about my walk and whether Joe will reply with a time. It's a bit overcast here today, it's not really nice outside. Oops, <laughs> so much for me keeping some of the raindrops in. All right, let's, let's work on keeping the next ones in. Um, but yeah, let's hopefully she'll come back with a, I'm hoping not to go too late. I have a um, an art class tomorrow uh, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. and I'm going to be doing some palette knife painting so I'm looking forward to that it's something I've wanted to do I actually have had a screenshot of this ladies class in my phone since 2018 um, so yeah, that's a long time that I've wanted to do her class. 
And um, yeah, I want to paint something for um, my spare bedroom. Uh, and my spare bedroom has sort of almost, just trying to think, peachy coloured walls. Sort of almost uh, a cream stroke peach coloured wall. And, uh, and then it has blue curtains. So, hoping to do that class tomorrow and finally have a painting for my front, front bedroom. Who knows whether I walk away and hate it. <laughs> Does anyone ever, ever go to those... Um, is it Picasso and like oh Pinoir and Picasso or like the the wine and um, has anyone ever gone to one of those? I I went to one with my next door neighbour. Uh, so she said ten or ten thirty. Is that okay? Yep. Uh, let's go ten. Ten a.m. Please. Perfect. Let's type that back. Uh, so yeah, I went to one with my next door neighbour, I think it was paint your own pet. Um, and yeah, I wasn't too happy with what I created there, but this time I'm going to be slower and more intentional about what I'm painting. And hopefully with Alicia's help, that doesn't look too bad. I'm still not sold on this pink. I think it's too vibrant. I think it's too um, yeah, too fluorescent. I will see whether I can dull that down with one of my other markers. And then I don't think it looks too bad on this. Hmm. I am confused, girls. Confused, right. And the only other thing would be to completely scrap this, not scrap it because obviously I'll use it for somebody, um, but to actually maybe find something that's more coordinated with the colours that I've used here. Let's see what I can do with the skirt. I'm just going to bring in one of these, it says it's a baby skin pink. And I'm going to see whether me going over the pink with this will help. That's making it peachy. So you can see from her shoes, that's the pink it was, and that's more peachy now, which uh, does actually represent sort of more of the um, sunset colours maybe. Okay, let's see what we got there. Not too bad. I'm actually thinking I might even go over the purple with the blue because I actually prefer that than the purple itself. I prefer this, um, this darker shade here. Let's see whether that makes a difference. All right, so she's written, okay, no worries, perfect. See you then. Ta-da! All right. Yeah, I'm happier with the purple after I've gone over it with the blue. 
So you can see the difference. I think the purple's too vibrant. All right, perfect, perfect, perfect. And I think the colors are then suitable to go with this. We will see. Right, bring this back in. Okay. Ah, oh, still not sure. Still not sure. Hmm. All right, I think I'm making a different base. I will be right back. So I have pulled out two papers. I think I'm leaning towards the pink. Um, it has like a like a multiple shade pink. So like the sunset that we were talking about. And on the other side, there's this blue. So if I make the blue just that little edge, um, I think that will work. The other option I chose is this one here, which is a peach color and I'm sure we get peach skies and then we've got this gold uh, word on the back um, so if I was to gonna if I was going to use this one I would use the peach as the main primary paper and have the the word as the um, As the little edge. Right, now I'm looking on camera. I like that one as well. So let's do this. Let's put that one there and then bring this one in. And oh, I don't know. I think the blue on this one's throwing out the peach in the skirt, whereas on its own, the pink is nice. Right, I'm going with this one. Who would have thought I'd go with this one? That's... Right, so let's trim this down to 12 inches. I haven't actually just checked whether that's 12 inches, but hey-ho, it's not going to matter. So we need this to be our primary paper. So we're going to take this up to this edge here. Mm, kind of probably does matter that it's even, because I now have a thin side over here and a thick side over here. Let's just check. Get out the... So bring that down. That's just under 12 there. So what, hang on, let's just check. That's that little ruler there and then Okay, so we need to take off some on this side. Kind of better to me. Okay, so I'm actually going to do the five inches this time and see whether that makes a difference to our edges. Let's get the scoreboard. And we need the ruler. And we need our 
we're gonna put that there and do I do five or do four and a half? Let's go four and a half and see what that does. So there. And four and a half there. Right. While I was looking for a paper, I was thinking to myself, maybe I should have got my watercolours out and tried to do some of the colours that were in the plaid um, with the umbrella. Um, but hey-ho, um, if I do go ahead and stamp that image again and do embossing, um, what I will do uh, is use the watercolours that I have in that beautiful... Um, watercolour tray and then I will show you what it looks like with that um, on that on that paper with the clouds that's if I go ahead and do that this weekend all right so we have our scored image uh, our scored edges we're gonna actually turn it over and bring in these sides so we've gone with four and a half this time. So it actually does look like it overlaps quite a bit now. Yeah. Yeah, I think four and a half is the way to go if you want to have that overlap. Like that, I like that a lot. All right, so let's get the double-sided tape. I'm actually gonna go for thinner double-sided tape this time. Let's pop that down and what we will do is slide one side into the other. So I'm going to start by sticking down this side here and lining it up on the base. <coughs> then bringing this one in over here. Of the paintbrush that's rolled in. Okay, so we have our base with the peach, and uh, let's come in with our beautiful girl that's going to sit up here on this um, part. And I think what we'll do is we will fold this one down this side. Ta-da! Okay. Now, do we want to... I think we'll probably just use tape roller on her. And then what we're going to do is probably look at um, stamping um, one of the sayings from the stamp set. Okay. Stamp roller is working. Like with the stamp roller when you can see the dots that it's leaving. Okay. Probably rub that onto my desk. Yep, I have. Alrighty. Let's have a look and see what she looks like. Pop her in the center. All right. Okay, I'm much happier with her on this um, colour, on this background, because, yes, yeah, she actually works here. Just use some of the tape. Stick that down. Okay, so 
Let's have a look on my stamps. Let's have a look and see what we have. We have, you look fabulous even when it's raining. After the storm comes a rainbow, thinking of you. I'm here for you, rain or shine. I like that one. Don't lose hope, brighter days are coming. Follow the rainbows. You are my rainbow every single day. Um, thank you for showering me with kindness. Um, not sure, not sure. Um, um, don't lose hope. Brighter days ahead. Um, follow the rainbows. You. Um, I'm really not sure on that one. I think after the storm comes the rainbow. Let's. Um, now, stamping block. Actually, this is probably going to be um, a big problem, isn't it? Just trying to... I might just do it on some white. And let's use the stamping platform. Okay, let's take her off. in first, line it up on the lines, okay, oh no, <laughs> did you just see what happened, <laughs> oh dear. It's not my morning, is it? <laughs> okay, that's perfectly stamped. I'm not going to go again. Take that off there. Take that out of there. Get rid of that. Okay, let's use, this is glasses cleaner. I don't know whether anyone else uses glasses cleaner. Um, but I do. Okay. Right, where are we? What are we doing? Okay, so we want to pop this down here, I think. And we might put some dots, jimmy dots. Jimmy dots or nama dots? I think I have some which are peachy and have gold in them. That would be good. Alright, let's get rid of the base. This is where it gets harder, you've got like not much to play with when you have it cut down already. Come on. Okay. That's gonna have to do. Um, 
maybe I'll just round the corners. Go with the smallest corner rounder. That'll do. That will do. All right, so now we probably want to use some of the tape. It's a 3M tape, whatever that is. So about that long. Turn that over. Stick it down. After the storm comes the rainbow. Ta-da! And then we are going to go with These. We have these. Another gold, pop that underneath, and then probably another darker one. Maybe if we lift lift that one, pop the darker one there, and then the lighter one. Actually, we'll go with the smaller of the two and then there's a smaller one here that will pop up here oh, love that and I think I've been meaning to use these for a while because they have the gold in and I don't really use them very much so I think that is done. My goodness, that's taken me forever. Uh, so, like I said, if I do do the other one, I might um, I might see if I can pop it on with different colours. We'll see how I go. All right, thanks everyone. Take care. Lots of crafty love from me, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay team, I am back. Um, I have uh, since been on my walk with my friend Jo. Um, so we went round the Botanic Gardens twice. Um, so I have made this one um, and I have since used the Tropicals um, and done watercolors for this one I've popped a couple of enamel dots up here and here and then what I've done is thinking of you I'm here for you rain or shine love how that one's turned out 
haven't done anything on the back yet um, but that's how that one has turned out so this is potluck prompts number eight then this is the one that I ended up resorting to to match the girl that I had um, embossed and also Copic marked. Um, then I've put some jemmies on here, um, some jemmies on here. We've got the gold foiling throughout and then we've got after the storm comes the rainbow. So that's the two that I have come out with. Actually going to give one of these away um, to somebody in the comments. <coughs> Sorry, little frog in my throat. Um, so if you would like to um, uh, join a giveaway, and I will announce it next, I'll announce the winner next week um, on Potluck Prompts number nine. If you would like to join, uh, let me know which one is your favorite so I could choose out of the two which to send. And, um, also write something about um, the weather, um, the weather where you are at the moment, whether you're in autumn, spring, um, whether it's raining where you are, cold and windy, or like here where the sun has come out to shine. Um, so write something like that. I'll know that you want to join the giveaway with your comment um, and let me know which one your favourite is so that I can send that to you. Um, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Lots of crafty love. And I will see you next week for Potluck Prompts number nine. Bye! -bye.